West of Roy Namor, at Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands, is a section of the lagoon that divers refer to as the Aircraft Graveyard. The Aircraft Graveyard is the area between North Pass and Meilu Island, where around 100 American naval aircraft were simply dumped into the lagoon near and just after the end of World War II. Among the aircraft types that were dumped there are several Wildcat fighter planes. Manufactured by the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation, the F-4F Wildcat entered service with the U.S. Navy in December 1940, a year before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. The Wildcat was the first line fighter plane of the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps in the early stage of America's involvement in the war. The Wildcat served aboard the Navy's aircraft carriers, as well as land bases in the Pacific, such as those seen here in the Solomon Islands in late 1942. The F-4F-4 was the last Wildcat version produced by Grumman. In late 1942, Grumman had begun mass production of its new Hellcat fighter plane. By mid-1943, the Eastern Aircraft Division of General Motors had taken over all Wildcat production at its plant in Linden, New Jersey. The letter M was assigned by the U.S. Navy to aircraft built by GM during the war, and Wildcats were given the designation FM. The first production version by GM was the FM-1. It was essentially identical to the F-4F-4, with the main difference being reduction of the armament to four 50 caliber machine guns. The FM-2 was the most produced version by GM. It carried the same armament as the FM-1, and the major differences included a more powerful engine, increased fuel capacity which extended its range, and a taller tail to help offset the torque of the more powerful engine. With its higher performance, the FM-2 proved well suited for operating from the shorter decks of the Navy's escort carriers, and the FM-2 remained in combat service until the end of the war. In early 1944, shortly after Operation Flintlock, Combat Aircraft Service Unit Forward No. 20 began operations on Roy Island. Near and just after the end of the war, part of the job of Cashew F-20's personnel was to strip aircraft which had been deemed as no longer being of use and dispose of them into the lagoon. This excerpt from a directive issued by the Navy in September 1945 shows aircraft which were to be disposed of overseas. Included on the list were all versions of the Wildcat. The wrecks of at least seven Wildcats are in the aircraft graveyard. They lie in close proximity to each other just inside the North Pass entrance to the lagoon, and all seven are FM-2s. Being in close proximity to each other makes it easy for divers to explore all seven of them with just a couple of dives. The Wildcats lie in depths ranging from 60 to 95 feet. All of them were stripped of most of their equipment, such as engines, instrument panels, armament, and other parts by Cashew F-20 prior to being dumped into the lagoon. This Wildcat is one of two that still has its wings attached. Beginning with the Grumman-built F-4F-4, all Wildcats had folding wings in order to allow more aircraft to be squeezed aboard the carriers. The openings where the 50 caliber guns were can be seen on both wings, and the landing gear is in the retracted position with the gear doors still present. The Wildcats still have their tail hooks attached, and on this one the tail hook is extended with the large growth of antler coral covering the end. Tail hooks are standard equipment used by carrier based aircraft to catch the arresting wires when landing aboard. This Wildcat is unique in the group because it is a FM 2P. The P in the designation indicates that this was a modified version which had cameras installed in the fuselage for photo reconnaissance missions. This FM-2P, Navy Bureau of Aeronautics No. 86777, is owned and operated by the Dakota Territory Air Museum. It shows where the camera ports were mounted on the left side just below the wing and on the bottom of the fuselage. Because this wreck lies on its left side, the side camera port is buried in the sand and cannot be seen, but the camera port on the bottom is plainly visible. Due to gaps in the historical records, it is not known exactly which squadron these planes were part of before they were stripped and dumped by Cassiu F-20. Having seven Wildcat wrecks to explore presents a great opportunity for Kwajalein Atoll divers 
which is not found on any other dive site in the world. And for those interested in the World War II history of the Marshall Islands, there's another option to see a combat veteran wildcat which was at Kwajalein Atoll. Located at the Hickory Aviation Museum in North Carolina is this FM-2, Navy Bureau of Aeronautics number 16278. It is the only surviving wildcat that flew at Kwajalein Atoll during World War II. Our story of this wildcat picks up when it was aboard the carrier USS Coral Sea. In July 1944, as the Coral Sea was leaving Enoetak Atoll in the Marshall Islands, it experienced a problem with its propulsion system, and it was ordered to return to the U.S. West Coast for repairs. As it was leaving the Marshall Islands, the Coral Sea stopped at Kwajalein Atoll. This excerpt from the Coral Sea's deck log shows that all of its wildcats were flown off to Kwajalein Island, and Bureau number 16278 was among those planes. It is not known exactly how long the plane was at Kwajalein Atoll. Following service in the Marshall Islands, including Kwajalein Atoll, Inuitok Atoll, and Majuro Atoll, it was taken to a refurbishment facility in California. After being overhauled and refurbished, it next went to Naval Air Station Glenview outside of Chicago, Illinois. Established in 1937 as Naval Reserve Aviation Base Chicago, and renamed in January 1943, Naval Air Station Glenview was the home of the Carrier Qualification Training Unit during the war. This was where new Navy and Marine Corps pilots went to get their initial carrier landing qualifications. The training carriers USS Sable and USS Wolverine, which operated on Lake Michigan, is where the new pilots did their initial qualifications. With the number 32 painted on its cowling, the plane is seen here about to take off from the USS Sable, and the Chicago skyline is in the background. In June 1945, the plane crashed during a training accident. The pilot was rescued moments later while the plane sank to the bottom of the lake. In the late 1980s, a company named A&T Recovery located the plane where it lay on the bottom of the lake. A&T specializes in recovering aircraft from Lake Michigan for the National Museum of Naval Aviation in Pensacola, Florida. In September 1991, just over 45 years after it crashed, A&T raised the plane and brought it to shore. From there, it went to the museum in Pensacola for restoration. The Wildcat has been on loan from the Naval Aviation Museum to the Hickory Museum since August of 2021. The plane is painted to represent an earlier F-4F-4, which was flown in the Solomon Islands by Joe Foss, the top Marine Corps fighter ace of World War II. The cockpits of the Wildcats in the lagoon at Kwajalein Atoll were mostly stripped out before they were dumped. By contrast, a tour of the cockpit on this plane shows how the equipment was laid out. The instrument panel, right side equipment such as the electrical distribution panel and landing gear crank handle, control stick, rudder pedals, and left side equipment such as the controls for the gun sight, throttle, and other cockpit equipment have all been carefully restored. The plane will be on display to the public when the museum's new facility is finished. For those interested in World War II aviation history, and the history of the Wildcat in particular, a visit to the museum to see this plane will be well worth it. Nearly 8,000 Wildcats were built by Grumman and General Motors before production ended in May 1945. Today, fewer than 50 surviving museums are private ownership in various places around the world. Well maintained and cared for by the museum staff, this plane serves as an enduring tribute to everyone who built, flew, and maintained Wildcat fighters before and during World War II.